Hello, and welcome to Bassoon Basics, Part 3, Forming the Embouchure. My name is Christopher Garcia, and I am the instructor of bassoon at Amarillo College in Amarillo, Texas. And today, I'm going to show you how to properly make the embouchure on the bassoon. So, first things first, have your students take their reed. Uh, make sure that they've already spent the few minutes having it soaked and that the reed is ready to go. And then we're going to go ahead and start by talking about the embouchure. Now, the way that I like to teach students to do the embouchure is very, very simple. I have them take the reed, place it on the fat of their lips, and simply roll in. Now, just rolling in is a little bit loose. They're not probably getting a proper seal. So what you want is for them to roll in and think a rubber band in their corners and just tighten up just a little bit. So here, here, and that way they've got a nice good seal on the reed uh, in creating a cushion with our bottom lip and with our top lip. Now the other problem that we're going to see with forming the bassoon embouchure is about how much reed we take in our mouth. Now the bassoon reed is kind of Odd. We can't really see how much is going into our mouth. So when we look at it, we think if, imagine my fingertips are, are my lips. What we want ideally is something like this. We really want it to look almost like the entire blade is in our mouth. Because the way the bassoon reed works is what we want inside our mouth is the part that's vibrating and creating the pitch. And in reality, it's this top half of the reed from about there on up is what's in our mouth and vibrating and creating pitch. The back half of the reed really isn't doing a whole lot. It just kind of helps stabilize uh, the tone and actually creates just a little bit of resistance and firmness. So that actually doesn't need to be vibrating freely in our mouth. Now because of the fat of our lips, in order to get that vibrating half of the reed in our mouth, we actually need to have almost the entire blade in our mouth is what it looks like. Because of the fat of our lips, it's really not. That first half is in there and vibrating very freely, but it'll look like the reed is completely in your mouth. So if I'm here, you can see that it looks like my lips are right up on that wire. And they are, I can feel the edge of the wire on my lips, but that is actually only having about half of the reed in my mouth. What you're gonna see with a lot of students is when they first start playing the bassoon, it's loud to them. And so if they put this whole uh, amount of reed in their mouth, the bassoon is very loud and it's a sound they're probably not used to. So they get a little frightened of it. And so what they do is they end up pulling reed out of their mouth. And the more they pull out of the mouth, the more that they're stopping the vibrations of the reed and stopping creating a proper sound on the instrument. So you'll see a lot of students that play with maybe about this much of the reed in their mouth or maybe even about this much. So they have a lot of the actual top of the reed exposed and they're creating a very damp and puny sound. So starting off your bassoon players, have them put that much reed in their mouth because if they can start that way, then they'll get used to that sound. And it'll be a lot easier as they try to adjust to different reed types depending on their advancement as a player. You're gonna want something a little on the softer side to start with so that they can get used to it. And then as they progress, something a little bit harder, just like the uh, saxophone or the clarinet would change thickness of reeds depending on their level. So that's what we're going to want here. So start them off, place it on the fat of their bottom lip, roll in, tighten corners, and just have them kind of hold there and blow. So what you heard is the crow of the reed. That's just the all the overtones coming out. And if you read has a nice crow with a lot of nice overtones, then you've got a pretty decent reed. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and put it on the bassoon. So in our last video, we talked about proper bassoon posture. So we want to make sure that the bassoon reed comes directly to us and that we're not having to adjust our head in any way to make the bassoon reed fit into our mouth. And so we're going to do the exact same thing that we did just holding the reed by itself on the bassoon. Now, most beginner books are going to have you start on uh, F 
I don't like starting on just thumb F because they don't have a very good grip of the instrument. I like to start them on C. C is thumb one, two, three, because this gives them a nice grip on the instrument. They're able to comfortably hold this. Our right hand is just chilling. We don't really need to use our right hand yet. We're going to stabilize everything with our left hand. But if we're holding a nice, comfortable note like C or even D, they've got a very good grip on the instrument. So now what you want to do is have them do the exact same thing. Have them place that reed on their bottom lip, like so, and roll in. And then they'll be able to produce a tone. C is a very comfortable note on the instrument. They're able to hold the horn, like I said, and it's just a very stable note. So again, have them bring the horn to their face, lip on the reed, roll in. Now, now that they've gotten the idea of how to make a sound and you know form their embouchure, what we want to do when you're starting your beginner bassoons 